emotions. We all have them. In fact, most of us experience several emotions every day. We might be sad one moment and happy the next. As adults, we've had years of practice dealing with our feelings. But for young children, emotions are new and sometimes even overwhelming. So how do children learn about emotions? They learn from you. Just as parents coach children in sports and in learning their ABCs, parents can coach children through their emotional moments. As you begin to emotion coach, the first question you need to ask is, how do you feel about emotions? For more than 25 years, Dr. John Gottman has studied families and emotions. I started looking at an idea called meta-emotion, M-E-T-A, emotion. Meta-emotion is how we feel about feelings. And how do we think about feelings? And what, what are attitudes towards specific emotions? Do we believe that emotions are a good thing? Or do we think they really mess up thinking, they're bad, we should try to minimize emotions? And we started learning that really emotions, the basic emotions, are kind of like the primary colors on a palette. And they're the same across the whole planet for our whole species. And they're experienced the same way. And physiologically, people respond in the same way. But the way people feel about feelings, that's really different. So part of what you really have to think about is how do you feel about emotions, right? Because children will model your own attitudes and your own behavior. If you ignore emotions and aren't interested, they'll learn to do that too. The way we handle emotions helps to shape how our children deal with their emotions. Researchers talk about four different ways that parents deal with their children's emotions. On any given day, depending on the situation, parents may use all four styles. So how do you parent? The four parenting styles are dismissing, disapproving, laissez-faire, and emotion coaching. Let's take a look at each style. Dismissing parents tend to ignore emotions such as anger, fear, and sadness. When Shannon gets sad, we try to make her happy. We do something else because at her age, she has nothing to be sad about. We just want her to be happy. One kind of parent that really wound up not thinking the world of emotions was a good idea, that it was harmful to dwell on feelings. We wound up calling them emotion dismissing. And they don't really think about how they're feeling very much. They don't have a detailed vocabulary for their emotions. And they think it's really harmful to dwell on this. So they're not noticing emotions in themselves. And as a result of that, they don't really notice those in their kids. Their kid has to really escalate the emotion to a big degree for them to notice that the child is sad. Dismissing parents value smiles and good moods over tears and negative emotions. They're very good at distracting their children who are sad or angry in hopes of making them happier. Bye, Mom. Bye, Shannon. Give me a kiss. Mm. I love you. I'll see you later, OK? OK, I'll see you later. She's going to be fine, so don't worry. If you say so. She is, OK? OK. Bye. How about we go do something fun? Do you want to go make cookies? Why don't we go make cookies? Yeah, come on, there's my happy girl. Dismissing parents become very good at making light of their children's negative emotions in an effort to distract them from their bad feelings. Although well-meaning, this method of distraction is a confusing message for a child. Okay, mommy will be home soon. How about a cookie? Okay. It'll be okay. It'll be better. Here, here's a cookie. If a child feels that her emotions are being ignored, even while being hugged, she may learn to hide her feelings, cutting off possibilities for emotional connections. Let me make it clear that emotion dismissing parents can be very warm and very loving. You know, I can, if my daughter's here, I can, I can look at her and I can say, as an emotion dismissing parent, what's the matter, sweetheart? Oh, come on, get a smile on your face. There, there's daddy's little girl. Good, good. See, I can be warm, but I'm telling her not to be sad. I'm telling her to have a smile on her face. And, we, you know, these emotion-dismissing parents were not bad parents or monsters. They just had a certain attitude 
about emotions that they were conveying. Disapproving parents criticize or punish children for being sad or angry. I can't stand it when she mopes around. Sometimes I just send her to her room. We had parents who not only were dismissing of emotion, tried to change their kids' emotion, but really disapproved of these negative emotions as if their kids were bad for being angry. They tend to see these negative emotions like sadness, anger, and fear in particular as if they were poisons inside a child, right? As if they were harmful to the child. And some of these parents will actually punish a child even when there's no misbehavior. The child says, I'm scared in my room. There's nothing to be afraid of. And what is, what is a parent doing by doing that? Perfectly positively intentioned to teach a child about reality and coping with reality. But the message underneath is don't trust your feelings, right? What you feel is not valid. Sadness, fear, anger. These may be new feelings for a child. By disapproving of a child's emotion or even punishing a child for having an emotion, the child is being denied the opportunity to learn how to handle her emotions in a healthy way. Kaylee, what are you doing out of bed? I'm scared. Scared of what? Monsters. There is nothing to be afraid of in this house. I have already put you in bed twice. Do not get out of bed. There is no reason. Do you understand? If you get out of bed one more time, no friends. Go. Get. With both disapproving and dismissing parenting, a child learns not to trust her own feelings. She may find it harder to cope with her emotions and is much more likely to suffer from lack of self-esteem. Laissez-faire parenting values and accepts emotions, but fails to provide guidance on behavior. I usually let my son, you know, do as he pleases, let his emotions out, and uh, my motto is, anything goes. These laissez-faire parents did all the steps of emotion coaching, but what they didn't do was set limits and do that problem solving with their kids. And their kids really had problems as they developed, because kids really want limits. They want some kind of constraints and control. They want to know what your values are. Be faster. Oh. I, that. What's that? Uh, huh? Hey. Oh. Oh, buddy. Did that make you sad? Sorry. <laughs> All right, I know it makes you sad. It's okay. Dad? Sorry. The laissez-faire style of parenting accepts all emotions, so children feel okay about expressing their feelings. But they may not understand their emotions or know how to manage them. Laissez-faire parenting fails to teach a child what is appropriate behavior or how to calm down when he's angry, sad, or afraid. As a result, a child may have trouble concentrating. When a child remains focused only on his own emotions, he may overlook social cues from other children, making it harder to find and keep friends. Emotion coaching parents value emotions, help children understand their feelings, and help them learn to solve problems. We really want our daughter to know that her feelings are really important to us, but we also want her to be able to handle really tough emotions. Now we found another group of parents we called emotion coaching. Emotion coaching parents are different. They notice lower intensity emotions, first of all in themselves, and second of all in their kids. The kids don't have to escalate being sad or being angry or being upset to really get their attention. And they see these moments not as poisons, but as opportunities for teaching or intimacy with their child. What's wrong? Mommy, I'm a little fat. I don't want you to leave. Well, but Mommy really has to go to work. I want to be with you when you're gone. What do you think we should do, honey? I want to be with you. Honey, Mommy can't go with you, but I'll leave a little bit of Mommy with you, okay? Mommy 
mommy does all over it. Do you still feel sad? No. I'm going to go say this to Katie. <laughs> Coaching is about offering empathy and guidance. It takes more time and patience, but by coaching a child through her emotions, she learns to trust and manage her feelings and becomes more confident at problem solving. Can you relate to one of these parenting styles? Or maybe all of them? Children raised by parents who value and guide emotions, the basis of emotion coaching, do better in many ways. They form stronger friendships, do better in school, handle their moods better, bounce back from emotional events faster, and are healthier. Here's why. Children who understand the importance of emotions and know how to communicate their feelings will be better able to manage life's challenges. To better illustrate this parenting approach, Dr. Gottman has identified five steps of emotion coaching. One, emotional awareness. Two, connecting. Three, listening. Four, naming emotions. And five, finding good solutions. Let's watch another example of emotion coaching, this time step by step. Step one is emotional awareness. It starts with being aware of emotions, both yours and your child's. We found that when we're aware of our own emotions, it's a lot easier for us to help our children be aware of theirs. <laughs> what is mom thinking? Oh no, here we go again. Why is this so hard to handle? Okay, I have to keep my cool, but I'm so frustrated with this fighting. Someone's getting mad or hurt. I know this is going to end up in tears. Parents who are in tune with their child's feelings are in a much better position to offer support and understanding when their child is sad, angry, or frustrated. Ah. Step two is connecting. Recognize emotional moments as the best time to draw close and help your child understand that his feelings count. Isaiah. Isaiah, what's going on? Are you mad at me? No, honey, I'm not mad at you. I just want to know what you're feeling. Come over here. This is an ideal mouth. time to talk about emotions and share feelings with your child. Step three is listening with empathy. Without the risk of disapproval, criticism, or indifference, your child will be more willing to share his feelings and work through them to a solution. So let's hear it. I hate my little brother. Why? Justin didn't share. He broke the ladder. Don't dismiss his emotion as silly or not important. Listen carefully. Show him you understand what he's feeling. A few quality minutes of really listening can go a long way to letting your child know that his feelings are important. Step four is naming emotions. By naming feelings, you're helping build your child's emotional vocabulary, allowing him to better talk about his feelings with those who can help. Justin didn't share. He didn't share. So it kind of made you feel how? Angry. It did? I can see you're upset. Are you mad at your brother? Isaiah, I know that you're angry. I would be too. But do you think maybe it was an accident? Yeah, maybe. This step may take a little detective work because sometimes the feelings are all mixed up. Naming emotions helps children calm themselves and provides them with the words they need to communicate their feelings the next time. Step five involves finding good solutions and it starts with setting limits. Sometimes I want my brother to go away. I don't think that would fix your fire engine, and we don't really want Justin to go away. Let's think of a better solution. This mom stepped in before the pushing and shoving went too far. 
she knows she's going to have to set some limits. She's letting him know his solution, sending little brother away, doesn't solve anything. When a child comes up with a solution that isn't possible, guide them to find another one. When the solution is his idea, he feels rewarded. Dickie! What would we do with the tape? Put it on the ladder. Do you want to try that instead? Okay, let's try that. This mom made emotion coaching look easy, didn't she? But accepting, sharing, and guiding emotions is not always easy. In fact, sometimes it's just not possible to emotion coach. One thing that, that we found was that the parents who were emotion coaches were doing it 30, 40% of the time. They weren't doing it all the time. You don't want to do this when you're busy. You, want, you don't want to do this when you're in a hurry and you're rushed. You want to take a little time because, you know, sometimes just sitting with a child who's sad about a toy having broken and being sad too communicates an enormous amount. So later on, when you have some time and everything's calmed down, you can go back to your child and say, that didn't go very well this morning. Can we talk about it? You know, because uh, I'm sorry for what I did and I need to apologize to you or, you know, I said this thing that I really regret having said. And that's so helpful for a child to hear that, that you've made a mistake. It's these very small moments that really increase a child's dignity, make a child feel much, much bigger than he or she is. A parent's role in emotion coaching is a big one, but empathy and guidance go a long way. Being in tune with your child and finding the right words to help your child work through strong feelings takes practice. In the process, your connection with your child will grow. Let's take one more look at the five steps of emotion coaching. One. Be aware of your emotions and your child's emotions. Two, use emotional opportunities to connect with your child. Three, listen with empathy. Let him know you care. Four, help your child to identify his feeling by naming the emotion. Five, encourage your child to come up with a solution, but be sure to guide him with good limits. As an emotion coach, you'll help your children learn about all emotions, from happiness to sadness. They'll not only learn how to handle those big emotional moments, but they'll learn to trust their feelings and solve problems, important skills that will last a lifetime. And remember, no one is an emotion coach all the time. But when you are, magical moments will follow. For more information about parenting in the first five years, visit ParentingCounts.org.